My entitled mother steals all the money I got for my 18th birthday party, and I could not be more upset. First, a bit of background. I was born a quiet child. By the time I was a few weeks old, I'd sleep through the night, wouldn't cry, and to keep me entertained, I'd just be left on a pile of cushions with sensory toys my grandma made for hours on end. My mother divorced her first husband because he couldn't have kids and got pregnant with me, her first child, as soon as she met my father. Yet she quickly ran out of interest for me and my grandparents, her parents, quickly took over for most of the parenting duties. My father tried his best while working night shifts. My neurological development was a lot faster than my motor ones and as such, I talked very quickly. I learned to read at five, but it took me longer than most kids to properly walk. Very quickly, I became a quiet child, preferring the company of books and notebooks to just about anything else. This would become, by the way, in my mother's book, signs that I was a defective child. Yet she She was too busy cheating on my father to do anything about it besides being a terrible parent. Eventually, divorce ensued, a stepfather took my dad's place and would treat me terribly on a regular basis until I learned how to scream to make him get away from me because the neighbors would know. From this point on, my mother started to play a destructive game. She would behave like the perfect mother on the outside, but there would be a constant nightmare waiting for me when I'd get home. In the meantime, she had two other kids, my brother, or so we believe, who's three years younger than me, as well as my stepsister. Both kids are treasured as normal kids, while I am told I'm a waste of space, time, and oxygen behind closed doors. Fast forward to my 18th birthday. Birthday parties were a thing because she would invite parents and show how perfect of a mother she was. The minute they were gone, I'd be chastised for eating cake and not wanting to find a boyfriend, and presents would end up in my siblings' rooms. So, my 18th birthday, my friends were all having big parties I was invited at. So my mother went all overboard with doing a big garden party, but she decided I wasn't good enough to be celebrated on my own. So she made it a 15th birthday party for my brother and a 10th birthday party for my stepsister. The day of the party comes and one after the other, I notice that the only thing they talk about are my siblings' birthdays. Not one wished me a happy birthday. I quickly realized that no one was told it was my birthday too. Actually, nobody even knew. One of my stepfather's sister-in-laws, learned about it and confirmed that she wasn't told it was mine too. She was a very opinionated woman and was outraged, so she took it upon herself to inform the guests about the situation, and before I knew it, she was collecting cash from people voluntarily to give to me to try and make up for it. As you can imagine, the party then took a sour turn, but at the end of the day, she gave me an envelope full of cash. It was hundreds of dollars, but to me, it looked like it was a lot. She told me to go use that money and spend time with my friends, and I was honestly, utterly, and completely in absolute disbelief. My entitled mother, after accusing me of ruining the party, found out about it and took it from me. She said it would help pay for my driver's license. Keep in mind also that I have not received any Christmas presents for two years now, under the same excuse that she's saving up for my driver's license. A couple of weeks later, I asked about said driver's license, and her answer was, well, you better get a job to fund it because I'm not paying a cent towards it. Now, this all happened about a few years ago. Shortly after this event, I got a job at Disneyland Paris so that I could live there in Disney housing and away from her. I did come back for Christmas, mainly for my grandparents, and she pulled off another one of her tricks there. As I was desperate back then to earn her love, I bought her an insanely expensive perfume that basically cost me one-fourth of my pay. She took my brother's then-girlfriend for an expensive shopping trip, buying her clothes, lingerie, chocolate, beauty products, jewelry, and she got me a dollar store clock with the price still attached to it. The following year, she took her good children on a vacation and took a local girl who was underprivileged with them. She guilt-tripped me into joining them for a few days, and the four of them had a blast humiliating me in public spaces, making me feel unworthy and completely useless. They would cover my food with salt, cut short any conversation I would try and partake in, making me feel guilty for not being financially able to take them all to eat in a gourmet restaurant. And she even had the audacity to tell me that she would happily swap me with the underprivileged girl anytime. I cut short the stay and I left. One day, a few months later, my grandmother took me aside as I was staying with them and she told me in these exact words, listen, I am ashamed of her and I wonder every day where we went wrong with her. Your grandfather and I, our lives are just as good as over, but yours is just starting. And if you don't walk away for good, she's going to ruin you.
Avenue. I left the following day and moved to North Carolina. My entitled mother trashed me on social media, calling me selfish. I blocked her in every way possible. I now live with my best friend. I am in therapy and undergoing treatment for severe anxiety, depression, and complex PTSD. And I'm taking life one day at a time while working to open my own business soon. All the while thankful that I'm away from my entitled mother. The mom in this story is absolutely disturbing. I mean, I'm so happy for this original poster that they were able to get away from her. But the trash they had to navigate through just to get where they're at is really sad. And it's something that they absolutely did not deserve. That birthday party sounded like an absolute nightmare. I can't imagine having my own birthday and not only having to share it with my siblings, whose birthdays are on different days, but then when the family tries to come together and provide some semblance of a birthday gift in money, she takes it away and never gives it back. I don't blame them for a second for moving away, and I think the fact that they took their grandparents' advice to heart is the best thing they've ever done. And hopefully they have peace in their life, and they never have to put up with that terrible, entitled mother ever again. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for wanting to get away from my terrible father, despite my supposed positive upbringing that he claims? I don't normally like posting sensitive topics regarding family, or anything for that matter, but considering how my situation seems to get worse by day, I genuinely don't know what to do, and at this point, I'm just looking for some advice. To give a window into my life, I am a 24-year-old male with separated parents, and I'm the oldest sibling. I have one younger, full-blooded sister, and other half-siblings. I'm going to college, but also work in retail, and I live rent-free with my father, his wife, and half-siblings. My father is a hard-headed individual, who to some will say that it's his way or the highway. We live in a single-story house with some quality features, like a spacious house, a fridge full of food, large property with dogs, and a family-owned business on site. Now, I understand I'll probably get chewed out for complaining about living rent-free, getting free food, etc., all while going to school and working while others have it much harder than me. But please hear me out. Throughout my life, I've done what I could to stay on my father's good side, all for the sake of my family, appreciating what I was given, and of course, living up to his expectations. I worked hard to get A's and B's throughout my school life, graduating high school with honors, respecting my elders no matter what they said, and doing my best to look like a golden child in the eyes of others to boost my father's social standing. Whenever we had guests over, I was expected to talk and mingle, and whether we were out and about or at home, I was expected to be at my father's beck and call. If he whistled for me, I was expected to show up to his room ready to receive orders or answer questions, like a dog on command. Now to some, it seems like the near-perfect life. Sure, my parents were separated, but I lived a life with a roof over my head, food on the table, clothes on my back, and then some. But it honestly wasn't all sunshine and gumdrops. As I said before, I was and still am expected to follow my father's expectations to the T, but no one bats a thousand, and I sure as heck made mistakes along the way. Simply being who I am is already a strike in his eyes, as my father's vision of me and my life was always to finish school, looking trim and fit, while getting a beautiful girlfriend, owning a house, starting a family, and taking over the family business, or at least starting my own successful one. He also expects me to enjoy all of his hobbies, like sports, going out socially, and having people see me as this overall perfect individual, living the American dream. I don't fit his mold at all. As I've yet to leave home, I'm overweight, I don't have a relationship, and I never have had one, I work in retail, and I enjoy my time watching anime, collecting figures and cars, and playing video games. I absolutely hate social gatherings, family or otherwise, because I don't like speaking with others and simply enjoy my small inner circle of a few friends as well as my sister whom I couldn't live without. Ever since I was little, anytime I did something that went against my father's wishes, I would get scolded for not doing as he said. Whether it was something small like leaving my socks on the living room floor or something big like stolen money or hiding something like report cards and the like, I was greeted with these awful punishments sometimes without warning and sometimes worse than just a scolding, if you know what I mean. As a side note, I want it on the record that anything lower than a B on my grades, even if it was still passing, was never good enough for him. And rather than finding ways to help me improve, I was always greeted with punishment, which admittedly only made things worse for me. As I got older, the more intense punishments got put to rest. But that hasn't stopped him from destroying my already non-existent self-esteem. My father also made makes it a constant habit that because my sister and I are over 
proper way to ridicule us because of our waist size. What really boils my blood is that given the situation, he will most undoubtedly bring it up in front of others simply to get a laugh or to boost that ego of his. Unfortunately, my sister gets it worse as far as the weight thing because she's a girl and is expected to look beautiful or she'll never be pretty enough for a man. And I wish she didn't have to deal with it. Luckily, she's moved out and doesn't deal with it on a daily basis like I do. Despite his own gut, my father has always had the need to fat shame, call people nicknames that to some are hurtful, and even criticize certain lifestyles or people who aren't married but live together. And I've always hated him for that. I've even refused to bring some of my friends over because some are a bit on the heavy side, and I don't want to hear him bash them simply because they're big. I love my friends, and I hate it when someone badmouths them, especially for how they look. I work hard at my job, and when I finally come home, how I choose to spend my downtime should be my choice entirely, whether it's enjoying my hobbies, hanging with friends, or simply sleeping the day away. But I'm constantly on high alert for my father, because I don't want to be fat shamed for just making myself a meal, or being called a useless good for nothing, because I barricade myself in my room away from others to refrain from being a burden. That's what I do no matter what. I do what I can so I don't have to be anyone's burden, but obviously it's impossible. But I try anyway. I want to also point out that while I don't pay rent or any bills, I'm still responsible for vehicle upkeep, my phone, and I pay for my own food so I don't have to rely on my family as much. As I've said before, I want to finally leave to start my life how I want without his constant stifling. But with being in school, a job in retail, and the U.S.'s horribly rising cost of living, I don't see it happening anytime soon. I'm also very afraid of even going out on my own, or even with roommates, as I was never taught anything about survival in the world, like finances and the like. But that hasn't stopped my father from constantly asking when I'm going to finally grow up. I feel stuck with virtually nowhere to go, with the constant thought that at the drop of a hat, my father could kick me out and I wouldn't know what to do from there. My sister already has her hands full as it is with her life, so I don't want to add to it even if I try and pull my weight. And one thing I forgot to mention is that my mother is still in the picture, but lives very far away and again, has her own problems to deal with, so I don't want to burden her as well. So basically in my opinion, my father has always chastised me for the life I'm living now, even though in his eyes I had the perfect childhood. But from my perspective, I see it as far from that as possible and want to finally be rid of the constant down talking. So please help me out here. Am I the jerk for wanting to get away from him and live my own life? You are absolutely not the jerk in this situation for wanting to get out and be on your own and be your own man. Sounds like your father is a piece of garbage. I think there are some solid steps you can take so that you can be ready to live on your own. There are a lot of free resources online that can walk you through how to live on your own from taxes to finances to grocery to finding a place to live, to finding roommates who are respectable and people you can actually be okay living with. There's a lot of opportunities there. My honest suggestion is to save money now. And based on the way your father is treating you, I would not tell him about your plans of wanting to move out and cut him off. Because it sounds like he really would kick you out of his house at the drop of a hat. And you really would be on your own trying to figure out what to do. So it's better to have a game plan now so when you do move out, you know exactly how to handle everything. Even if everything gets taken away from you, having a plan of action of how to get around with public transportation, as well as how to find a place to live or where to go if you do get kicked out, will be very valuable information for you to use in the off chance that you need it. Regardless of what happens, I really am sorry for the upbringing you've had to endure. It must have been miserable being treated like that, and I can only imagine being at your father's beck and call at the drop of a hat. I mean, how obnoxious is that? Hopefully things work out for you, and hopefully you're able to devise a plan so that you can be ready to move out and live on your own, if that is indeed what you want to do. My soon-to-be wife has ADHD, and honestly, it's burning me out. First, some background. My fiancé and I live together, and we have been engaged for over a year. We also dated for several years prior. She bought the house, we both work full-time, and the issue at hand is the fact that my soon-to-be wife has ADHD. I am honestly at my wit's end when it comes to the household chores, projects, and most importantly, time. Both my fiance and I work full time 9 to 5, but it's after work when the issues start to rise up. When 
I get home, I like to have a few minutes of downtime before starting on the home chores and projects. And then I like to stop at around 8 o'clock to eat dinner, clean up dishes, and do things like card games, video games, spending time together, whatever. My fiancé, however, goes straight from work to chores and won't stop doing chores or projects until she drops. Typically, she even skips lunch at work and then after work will do chores and projects until 10 o'clock at night, where she only then eats something unhealthy. And then once we have reset the house by putting away all the dishes, cleaning the countertops, and then some, by that point, it's 11 o'clock at night, so I only have the energy to lay on the couch, watch an episode of TV, and then we both go to bed. I feel completely overworked and like my entire life is being steamrolled by her and I am stuck in a bind. If I want to spend any time with her whatsoever, I have to help out. I don't mind the work, really. I pull my own weight and I have single-handedly done some major projects to improve her house. There are even chores that are 100% mine. However, she will often go back and do them again even after I have done them and I don't halfway do anything. I cannot keep going like this. Every weekday, I wake up, go to work, come home, work all night, and then go to sleep. Sometimes we agree to stop at a certain time, but it doesn't really help. Most often, she blows past that time and then does a bunch of other things while I'm sitting around waiting on her to finish. And then by the time she is done, it is already close to 11 again, and neither of us have any energy to do anything productive anymore. She tells me that I don't have to help and that I should just do what I want and let her do her own thing, but I cannot sit back and let her do everything. I know having a house is a joint effort, and she also gets mad at me if I don't help enough. She complains she doesn't have any hobbies or friends. I don't know what to tell her other than, no, duh, you don't do anything fun. You literally work all day and then work all night. She tells me, just tell me when to stop and I'll stop. But when she is in the moment, there is no stopping her. This is affecting just about every aspect of our life. She agrees with this, but does nothing to attempt to rectify the problem. We have had multiple sit-downs and discussions where we reach a resolution, but the resolutions never get implemented. She promises things will change. She admits it's a problem and doesn't want to be like that, but she doesn't actually do anything to stop it. I, on the other hand, have been spending tons of money and time trying to help her, but nothing works, and I get no appreciation. The more I do, the more work gets put on me, and now I find myself doing the same stuff. I hardly ever do the things I like to do anymore because it's too late and I'm too tired. We've tried organizing all the tasks we want done in a particular day and sticking to only those, but honestly, it doesn't help. She just keeps going. We've tried picking a hard limit of when we're going to stop, but she consistently blows past it by at least an hour and a half. I then propose a stopping time of one and a half hours prior to the real stopping time, but she blows past both of those and just keeps going. It's like she literally can't do anything other than work between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. And don't even get me started on the weekends. I am seeking advice from other people who have dealt with similar situations on how to cope with this. General chore and labor division strategies aren't really what I am looking for since she doesn't follow them. How do you deal with someone who wants to change says they will change, ask for help in order to change, but then does everything not to change. It sounds like your wife needs to see a doctor. This is really not normal behavior. To clean your house again and again and again, day after day, sounds incredibly obsessive. And that does not sound normal. And honestly, it's a little concerning. I think seeing a doctor and explaining to them, hey, my wife cleans the house obsessively every day of the week. And what you've described is not normal. I don't know of anybody who does a deep clean of their house every night, all night. That's crazy to me. So if she really does have ADHD and if she's exhibiting signs that are probably similar to that or if you even think that she has that, I would probably go to her and be like, hey, I think medication might be the solution here or at least one of the solutions we can try that might help the situation. If anything, the doctor can at least point you guys in the right direction of what to do because this is a type of behavior that is just not normal in my opinion. So I wish you the best of luck and hopefully you're able to figure this one out because this definitely sounds like a mess. My girlfriend just found 
found out that she's pregnant and wants to break up with me and raise the child alone. My girlfriend and I have been dating for almost nine months. Things have been going great and I'm very much in love. Recently, she introduced me to her kids. She has a 19-year-old, a 15-year-old, and an 11-year-old. I have been getting to know them and they're all fantastic. Two weeks ago, she cancels plans out of the blue and sends a text message saying she wants to break up. I start racking my brain, trying to figure out what could have possibly happened, and I can't come up with anything. We had just spent the evening before together and everything was great. I finally get a hold of her and she tells me she's pregnant and doesn't know what to do. I'm secretly thrilled because I've always wanted kids and I know she's a great mom, but I just tell her that I'll support whatever she decides and that I'm here for her. But she gets even more upset because she says we haven't known each other for long enough to have a baby and she needs to also worry about the kids she already has. That itself is completely valid, but I also know that she had a very awful and terrible childhood and I know what's weighing on her as well. She's been very intent on taking things very slow, which I understand and I have been fine with. Finally, after almost two weeks, she text messaged me again saying she's going to keep the baby but doesn't want me involved. I'm absolutely floored right now and I don't even know how to respond. Ideally, we would stay together and raise the baby together. If she didn't want to keep it or didn't want to stay together, I know I would just have to accept it. But for her to have the baby and not let me be involved at all? I'm just supposed to have a kid out there and I'm not allowed to see it? I understand she's scared, but that doesn't seem fair. I want to be respectful because I know this is a stressful time for her, but I'm not going to just say okay and promise to walk away. Honestly, I have no idea what to do. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but is she maybe cheating on you? That is honestly the first thing that came to mind for me. I immediately thought, oh, this kid is not his. Because the way she's acting is really weird. Like, wouldn't you want the man who is going to be this kid's father involved in that kid's life? Why would you suddenly say, nope, it's my baby, you can't see it. We're breaking up, see ya. And worst of all, this came out of nowhere. Like, she was so happy. It's like her getting pregnant was the very thing that she did not want, and that was enough for her to immediately dump you. I don't know about you, but that just seems super suspicious. Like, why would you do that suddenly out of nowhere just because you're pregnant? I mean, it's not like she didn't think you were good boyfriend material, because she introduced her kids to you, and you were making an effort to get to know them, to be more involved in their life to some degree. So the assumption that she couldn't trust you to me just doesn't make sense because introducing your boyfriend to your kids is a very special moment and that, in my opinion, is a big sign of trust. So why is it all of a sudden that she doesn't want him involved now that a new child is introduced into the mix? My first thought is that she's cheating but hopefully that's not the case. Whatever happens, I wish you the best of luck in navigating this and if you truly are not able to see this kid and it is your kid after all, then I'm really sorry for how things went down. But hopefully things work out and you're able to be involved in this kid's life. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.